Hey there, fellow survivors of the apocalypse, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Rad's Guide to Project Zomboid, Episode 7, The Fuel Must Flow. The first thing I'm doing, gonna do right now is to probably spend the remaining daylight to obtain some extra shelving before we go on that fuel run. Or actually, you know what? I'm gonna get the gas cans, uh, the known gas cans from um, the neighboring buildings. So a reminder, uh, we have a whole bunch of gas cans here in this garage, and that's really not that far from where we currently live. So we're going to get on down there, collect the gas cans so we can go on a fuel run and really top up. So the reason for the fuel run is... If you run out of gas and you're far away from home, that is a bad situation to be in, right? Like you're going to be somewhat effectively stranded. And unless you have brought with you a lot of uh, provisions and survival items and the like, which usually you don't bring on long distance runs because they weigh you down, um, you're gonna have a very bad time. So, what I highly advise is that you always bring a gas can with you. At least one full gas can left in the trunk of the vehicle that you're currently driving in case of emergencies. Now, it is entirely possible to have your car disabled um, and it won't take gas, right? So if it, for instance, um, if you destroy its engine or somehow destroy the, the gas uh, tank, you know, there's a bunch of different ways to disable vehicle. All right, spare gas might not help you, but it still may. Uh, depending on your skills, you might be able to hotwire other cars. And then also depending on your um, your luck, you might be able to find another vehicle with keys, but no gas. So having an extra can of gas might not even help your own car. It might help another car. Alternatively, having an extra gas can in the trunk at all times allows you to siphon high volumes between multiple vehicles. So if you find a better vehicle out there, and you're like, you know what? I'd rather have that vehicle. Uh, it's in better shape. It has better stats, but uh, it has no gas. I just have the keys. Of course, having a gas can on hand is uh, essential for that as well. All right, so we are headed directly to the south to just pick up as many gas cans as we can. And also, uh, gas cans is a very needed thing for you to have once the power goes out. So I know I spoke about this last stream, but I'll mention it again. Um, in game, in the first three weeks or so, uh, the power will go out. And what that means is once the power is out, uh, you are going to need to run a generator in order to keep the lights on and the freezers and refrigerators running and all that stuff. And in order to do that, uh, having access to gas cans so that you can fuel up those generators is pretty dang essential. And so that you don't have to make so many trips back and forth to gas stations, it's very handy to, um, to essentially just have a whole mess of gas cans on hand so that when you go to the gas station, you top up a lot. There are mods, of course, that add like trailers that have gas and stuff like that. Um, I'm not talking about those. I'm just talking about good old-fashioned gas cans. Uh, because I have a little extra carry weight, I am going to bring this propane tank home with me as well. So what I need to do, it, it, it weighs uh, 10 encumbrance, let's call it. Uh, I need to make some extra space in my backpack, because ideally I want to put it in my backpack so it doesn't weigh me down so much. Because unlike your own inventory, where you can exceed your carry weight capacity at the cost of being encumbered and getting hurt, uh, your bags can't exceed the carry weight. Yeah, let's take that too. What do you use propane tanks for? So if we ever want to get into metalwork, uh, we're going to need a propane torch, a welder's mask, and propane. And every time you use a propane torch for metalworking, you are burning propane uh, in the process. 
And metalworking is useful to repair uh, car bodies. The car bodies are made of metal for the most part. Obviously not the tires or windows. But um, to repair things like the hood of a car, uh, you're going to uh, be using your metalworking skill uh, more than your mechanic skill. And then also for security. If you want to put metal uh, sheets uh, as barricades, that is metalwork. If you want to build metal fences, metal roofing, metal walls, that's all metalwork. There's also metal boxes that you can build. The next big update of Project Zomboid, which I have no idea what its ETA is, but the next big update um, also is going to be introducing crafting your own metalwork uh, weapons and the like. So you'll have like a, a forge and a, a smelter and, and that kind of thing. So you'll be able to make uh, fun forged weapons with metalworking, presumably. Of course, this isn't out. Nobody but the developers have played it, so it's all speculation, but I figured to mention that as well. All right, it's 9 p.m. We have grabbed the gas cans. One thing I like to do is once it's like too late to go anywhere useful. I like to read books. It's a really good way to pass the time when there's just not enough time in daylight hours for you to go somewhere. So it's, it, it's 9 p.m. It's dark out. It doesn't make sense for me to try to traverse the map to loot more, etc. It's too dark. Right, it's too dangerous to go out in the dark unless you really know what you're doing, and this being a guide for new players, that doesn't seem right. So, um, the nighttime hours is a great way to fill the gap between when you are, um, when it's dark out and when you want to go to sleep. Because if you go to sleep too early, you'll end up waking up at like 3 in the morning, and then it's dead time, right? Ideally, you want to be moving around during daylight hours, so books... And magazines are a great way to do that. So we're heading back into my uh, little secure room. I am going to delete all of this garbage. Don't need any of that. And let's go ahead and put the propane tank uh, just on the floor. It's a really heavy object. So putting it on one of the storage shelves will use a fifth of its the storage shelves space which is a lot of space. We can preserve a lot of that space by uh, being a little bit more efficient plopping on the ground because it it's a very large um, model. So it's very easy to see. So one easy thing for me to do is just to read a bunch of the, uh, the magazines that I've got. And it's worth mentioning, and I did mention this last week, but the skill, the skill books have to be read in order. So if you are levels 0, 1, you have to read volume 1. If you're level 2 or 3, you have to read volume 2, so on and so forth. So we can't read ahead. So given that all of my crafting skills are 0, uh, the only skill books that I can read are volume 1 books. Uh, another really useful magazine for me to read would be the Lane's Auto Ma Manual. Uh, so this is going to allow me to do um, mechanics for certain vehicles. Uh, there's three manuals. There's one for sport, one for heavy, one for standard. Also, let's go ahead and um, get rid of the freezers that I'm holding. Now, because I don't necessarily want... Yeah, I'll actually just set up the other freezer. Now, one of the reasons why I grab the freezer is the my character's weight is about two kilograms lower than uh, I started at. So it's it's ice cream is one of those. There's a few different materials or uh, foods like ice cream or peanut butter that are very calorie dense. 
and uh, as a result, make for efficient ways to gain weight because trying to be a good weight is like a bit of a struggling game. All right, so that this um, this uh, car battery charger allows you to charge up batteries, and we will continue with the literature. So I'm going to put the magazine or the newspapers in there. I'm just going to keep reading these magazines because they're quick. So any of the magazines that are unread. So the reason why I opened up the training materials is anytime you read something fully, it will be marked down here rather than grayed out. So I've already read Electronics 1, Engineering 1, How to Use Generators, uh, Lane's Auto Manual for Performance, and now I'm reading Engineer 2. And this way, if you read magazines right as you obtain them, not only can you mouse over it and say, hey, I can already see that it's already read, but it gives you a pretty good idea of like what you should be looking for. Uh, so I find that pretty handy. And that's also true of skill books. And that's also true of home v VHS and regular VHS. So the regular VHS and the home VHS are two different categories. Home VHS is just people making their own recordings. And then the regular VHS is stuff that you can find in VHS stores. So those are the two categories. And it's also worth mentioning that I updated the tracker. So here is the updated tracker. I know it is busy, uh, but I marked down everything that we've already got. I added extra tools here that I thought would be useful, as well as the things at the bottom of the list of just like what to regularly collect. It's not to say that you need an infinite amount of them. Certainly you don't need an infinite amount of garbage bags, for instance, but it doesn't hurt to have a tidy sum given that they don't weigh very much. And then also in the tracker, it shows you all of the skill tapes. Um, so every single skill tape is represented here. And then also what um, bonuses or experience you can get out of them. So for instance, I already have Exposure Survival 4, which happens to be a Carpentry 75 tape. So I do already have a skill tape that gives me Carpentry. But to get the most bang out of my buck out of that VHS tape, I need to read Carpentry 1, the book, which I don't have. So that is why I'm getting fuel. So that I can drive around looking for the book. Going to things like schools and bookstores um, that are likely to contain Carpentry 1. Rather than... Um, the alternative, of course, would be to uh, you know, go house to house on, on people's individual bookshelves. And it's possible... I find what I need that way, but it's going to be fairly effortful. It's way better to make just one stop. Okay, I think every single magazine I have has been read. I'm gonna pull out the duplicates. So one of the reasons to keep the skill books and magazines, even if you've already read them, probably the, well, there's two reasons. If you're playing a multiplayer, other players can read those books because unlike um, recreational entertainment, these stuff with these literature that gets consumed and destroyed effectively once you read them, the, um, the skill books don't get destroyed. And the advantage of that is if you die, and you want to start over, you can um, go to your base and read all those again. And and everything that you've already collected, you can benefit from. And then the other reason is in multiplayer, other players can, you know, use your library. All right, it is time to go to sleep. Say in the morning, pretty good time. I tried to wash myself a little bit because uh, my face is caked in blood. Uh, so let me just wash myself here. OK, 
Get all that grime and guts and gore off my face. And then we'll go on a little bit of a fuel run. I have something like, what, five fuel cans, which is a really good amount. So that should allow me to, um, to bring home quite a lot of fuel. I don't yet have like a generator, but I have read the generator magazine. And honestly, the generator magazine is way more rare than a generator. Uh, so I'm not too worried about finding a generator. They're actually relatively easy to find. Now, the other thing is I have an open window here, uh, meaning that zombies hypothetically could come indoors without making noise. Generally, they're going to smash a new way. They're not that bright, meaning that if you have, you know, if they see me or hear me or something like that, they're going to make a new path. Um, but that's not always the case. So trying to get that... Um, Patched up would be nice. So I have six gas cans. That's pretty good. I didn't eat for the day. I do have chips on me if I need them. And I am going to leave this door closed. I don't... I'd rather be inconvenienced to have to open it up again. Rather than um, the possibility of a zombie getting in. So I did previously mention this, but cars, especially battered cars, make for really, really poor battering rams. There is one chick trick, however. If you go to the front and you go to vehicle mechanics, you can open up the vehicle mechanics overlay, which shows you the condition of your vehicle, and then just start driving. And one of the advantages of this is it allows you to monitor the damage to your vehicle as you're driving. So if my hood is about to break or my tire is about to pop, it will alert me to that before it happens because I'll be able to see it here, which is pretty handy if you ask me. The other thing I could be looking for, because I'm not wed to this vehicle, is if I see any keys out in this lot, like there's a bunch of Econovans out there that look like they could be pretty good vehicles. Um, I'm going to stop before I do my fuel run just to see if any of these other vehicles, um, that look like they're in pretty good shape and would have a lot more storage have keys in or around them. Uh, yep. I have a key to this van. And I also have a map to Riverside. Okay, well, that was, that was easy. I think this, uh, this van also has some sort of gasoline. All right, so taking a look at this van, the trunk can hold 113, um, space or whatever. It's not really kilos, but, um, the engine is pretty high quality and not too loud. The car is in remarkably good condition, except for some suspension and brakes. Um, the gas tank's in really good condition. The muffler is performance and doesn't really increase the sound of the vehicle. Yeah, this is uh, orders of magnitude better than my, my current car. Orders of magnitude better. That's not to say that there isn't nicer ones. I'm going to check the Spiffo van over here as well. And there's a... Oh, that is a lot of zombies. That is a lot of zombies. Alright, it's on. This is my van, I'm not giving it up. So it's the same old backpedal, but because my backpedaling speed isn't very fast, I'm only going to be able to get a hit in or two before I have to flee. Now there's some advanced tricks here to be done, which is worth noting. Uh, one is to use terrain blockers. 
So if I walk these zombies into like these crashed cars, some of the zombies are going to get hung up on the cars. And some of the zombies are going to path around them more quickly. So instead of there being a blob of scary zombies, as you can see, I split the group up, allowing me to actually do a little bit more damage. Because if there's way too many zombies in one big blob, you end up spending more time running than you spend fighting. And it's less effective. Uh, the same can be done in trees. However, uh, going into trees runs the risk, of course, of you getting like stuck or trapped or whatever. So it's uh, relatively imperfect. Yeah, as you can see, it's still a big blob. Um, and then also, there's another way, which is to use fences that are um, that are vaultable for the player and not vaultable, not easily vaultable or quickly vaultable for zombies. Uh, they do run the risk of them lunging for your shins, which I had mentioned prior uh, in last stream. And that also is still true here. But it can be a pretty effective way to split up a group. So, looking around me, and is it, another thing that you can see is I am extremely panicked as a result of the um, all the zombies that are chasing me, which is to say that my fighting effectiveness is lowered. I'm also going to eat the chips that were in my backpack because I'm a little peckish, and it would be good not to uh, lose damage because of peckishness. So, as an experienced player, I could just fight them um, I just wanted to demonstrate some of the other tactics that new players might be able to uh, take advantage of. Once you see, like, more than two zombies uh, that would engage you in the next attack, it's probably a good time to disengage. And this is, um, this is a very important skill to master if you want to play Zomboid is how to fight multiple zombies, because unless you're on, like, builder difficulty, you're gonna have to fight multiple zombies. There's just no two ways about it. That's just how... That's just how zombies move around. They actually traverse the map in clusters and group up. Generally in groups of, like, five to eight, but sometimes they can be monstrously large groups of, like, you know, 20, 30, 40 zombies, especially if they've been drawn from a meta event. So if there was like a, a scream or gunshots or something like that, a house alarm, a car alarm, um, you can get some really ridiculously large groups. So I didn't really see any low fences around for me to take advantage of. So I'm just very carefully engaging them as few as I can at a time, whittling their numbers down and being patient so as to not make any mistakes to give them a way to get some nibbles in. But there they go. They're gone. Now, a fight like that, if I was really new, I might want to disengage entirely. Uh, dipping into a building, is one really functional way to disengage from zombies um, because you can go into a building uh, and as long as there aren't like enemies in the building, right? If there's more enemies in the building, you might be getting into more trouble than you are avoiding. But let's say there's like an empty house, a house you have cleared and marked down is cleared. You could run into the building and run out the back door and close all the doors behind you. And uh, likely most, if not all of the zombies are gonna be, are gonna lose you. Essentially you are, um, you know, you're ditching them, and they're going to be stuck at that house. And they won't be permanently at that house. They'll get shuffled, shuffled around as well and dispersed over time. So now all those zombies are dead. I'm going to uh, start walking back to the van. A little delayed. I meant to be already on my fuel run, but the fact that I found a really nice van is is pretty amazing. But that would be uh, one such way to take on a large group. But if you're not confident in your fighting skills, disengaging 
is perhaps the smarter move. Just to, to, to nope out of the situation and live to fight another day. It's very important to know when you should do that. Because fighting to the death sounds great and all, but then you have to restart from zero. Which kind of sucks. No keys in this. A spiffo tie and a spiffo mug. Real company man. Uh, the other thing I could do is to try to forge to investigate the area. This isn't something that you should do with a lot of zombies around you. Um, also, I have uh, sunglasses on, which is not helping me much. But it's possible to find keys this way. Although it's unreliable enough that I tend not to bother. So once these two zombies are dead, I'm going to inspect the van to see if it's any good. Vehicle inspection. Um, but I'm almost certainly going to go with the, uh, the news van because I have easy access to it. Yeah, this one's not even, not even as, as nice. Has a very large gas tank, though. So the reason I mentioned that is the, the one I found had a small gas tank, and I could take the large gas tank out of this um, and try to put it in the other van once I have the basic mechanics uh, magazine read. So what I can do in this case is mark that down. So it's approximately here. Add note. Big, heavy tank. Heavy being the vehicle type and big being the size of the uh, the tank. Tank isn't gas tank. There's no, without mods, there's no such thing as like tanks in Zomboy. Um, so one thing I can do with the old vehicle is to park it somewhere useful. Rather than to siphon off all the fuel, to leave it on the side of the road uh, with a with the keys in the ignition, but not on. This is uh, important. And to then mark it down as like usable Nyla. Gassed car with keys. So the reason why to put the gassed car with keys? Uh, actually, I don't like the placement of that. Is if my character dies on the corpse of my character, and, and I'll talk a little bit about death uh, for a second. When you die, you turn into a zombie most of the time. There are, there are some times that you can die and not turn into a zombie, like if you fall or bleed out and you weren't zombified, and then you're just a corpse on the ground. But if you turn into a zombie, what ends up happening is you'll reanimate and wander around. And if you choose to create a new character on the same server, you can find your old self and loot you. Generally speaking, all your clothing will be destroyed, because in the process of dying, likely your clothing got shredded, but at least you'll be able to get your weapons, keys, backpack, that kind of stuff back. Tools, etc. Anything that you had on your person. Um, the reason to leave the keys in this car is if I died and respawned in Rosewood. Let's say I died going exploring to the north. And I respawn in Rosewood. All of my keys to all of my vehicles will be on my corpse way far away from Rosewood. If I leave keys in this vehicle, however, I can always hop in this car and drive to my and drive to my uh, death site. So leaving the keys in the car is really important uh, for backup cars so that they are usable uh, post-death without having to go fetch. So that is why I did that. Um, the other thing I want to do is to pull all the 
all the gas cans out of the trunk because this car is not going to require backup gas cans. Make sure that the glove box is empty. Uh, the other thing to make sure is if I'm leaving the keys in the car, don't lock the doors because uh, then I won't be able to get back in. And by default, you pull the key out of the ignition when you exit the vehicle, so you have to very intentionally um, put the key in. It's not something that will happen um, accidentally. Just looking around me, because I got ambushed the last time I was standing here. Alright, in the uh, trunk here... There is a lot of radios. There's a first aid kit with bandages and um, equipment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this ham radio and see if it has the emergency broadcast uh, station. Because I'm still seeking the station. No, it literally has no channel presets. Okay. I kind of like the ham radios uh, versus the other radios, so I'm going to stick it back in the trunk. Because this trunk has so much space I, and I'm not next to a, um, a dumpster or anything like that, I'm not going to worry about the other stuff that's in the trunk. I'm also not going to worry about the stuff that's in the glove box. There's also the Vans radio, true. And the Vans radio has no channels, which is kind of funny because it's a radio van, so they didn't even have their own channel plugged in. Uh, no brand loyalty there, I guess. So I would like to take on the zombies that are following this van uh, before they blob into one large group. So we're going to approach this place slowly, in other words. And any car that we break into, we could hypothetically check the radio. It's pretty early on, meaning that the likelihood of there being um, power cut, water cut, or helicopter, which are the three biggest events to plan for, is pretty low, but not zero. And that's one of the reasons to always be checking the radios. So there, they blobbed on behind me and tried to grab me, and I was able to sprint away at the last second. So this group uh, became a big blob, just like the previous group at around the van. So I'm gonna have to fight it with the same sort of level of caution as before. There's a map on one of them. For this, these zombies, so these zombies down here are going to add to the group, which is kind of unfortunate. I don't want to make the group any larger. Uh, one of the most important things early on to loot, unless of course you have a desensitized veteran, is beta blockers. Uh, beta blockers are like panic pills in game, which can be taken to lower your levels of panic, which is really helpful for when you have larger group fights like this so that you can fight effectively rather than panicked swipe at them ineffectively because that's effectively what i'm doing right now is i'm just like panic swiping because my level of panic is so high so instead of fighting well i'm just like ah and just like flailing uh which sucks but a little bit of beta, 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 uh, beta blockers and, and all that goes away So here I am using the car as like a, a bit of a filter. Now I didn't clear the spiffos, but that would be another way to ditch these guys if I had, which is to say 
go through the spiffos and figure out um, had I cleared it, you know, I could ditch the zombies in the spiffo. On the default settings of uh, Zomboid, both on Apocalypse and on Survivor, uh, zombies have a very short memory. This can be changed in sandbox modes, of course. But the reason I mention that is I just have to be not visible and not heard by them for, like, 30 seconds for them to forget about me. And they're not... Uh, so there are a lot of um, customized settings in Zomboid, like zombies being able to open doors or climb under vehicles or stuff of that nature. But by default, zombies are really dumb. They're dumb shamblers that are only really scary if they ambush you or in large numbers. It's also worth noting that this fuel run is pretty typical. Generally speaking, when you're going to certain points of interest like schools or gas stations, uh, you are just going to run into a lot more zombies than some suburban neighborhood uh, would otherwise have. So this is what you need to prepare yourself for if you plan on uh, going out and about in the wider world and looting is groups of, you know, 10, 15, 20 zombies. That's uh, pretty typical. Characters getting a little hungry. Luckily, gas stations usually have some pretty good food. I also found a leather jacket, so I shredded it for leather strips, which can be used as bandages. And then also, um, they can be used to reinforce clothing. So anytime you find leather clothing, uh, leather clothing that you don't intend to wear, um, shred them the way I did by using scissors. You need scissors on your person to do it. All right. I'm also getting a little drowsy, which means that my combat effectiveness is going to go down. Instead of calling it quits, I'm going to rely on the vitamins I have looted. I don't want to really turn back now, because if I turn back now, um, one of the ramifications of turning back is that zombies might just fill a lot of the progress that I've already made. So in popping a bunch of vitamins, I can reduce my fatigue and fight a little bit more. The vitamins will only give you, like, you know, if you take a whole bottle of vitamins. It's it's not going to give you a lot of time. It's not going to let you skip a night's sleep or anything like that. It's just going to keep the, the drowsiness away for like an, uh, an hour or two in game, depending on how many vitamins you take. Uh, coffee is a little bit more effective, where if I ate like a whole bag of coffee, I might be able to nearly skip a night of sleep. There's only a few left now. There's only four that I can see. And yes, I did say eat a bag of coffee because in a intense late night situation, it's you're not usually next to a coffee maker for a, uh, for a fresh cup. Oh, here's another leather jacket. So this leather jacket is partially damaged, as you can see. So it's, uh, I don't even bother keeping partially damaged leather jackets. I always just shred them. Character did get a little winded, uh, but I am gonna start refueling the van anyway. And no, no love for denim. Um, for me, it's leather or bust. I only do cloth and leather. I use cloth strips to train my tailoring. 
and then uh, leather strips to enforce my clothing. Whereas denim is not as plentiful as uh, as cloth, so it's bad for training. And then it's not as tough as leather, so it's bad for uh, it's less effective. All right, refuel from pump. I can hear a zombie coming though. Louie, thank you for the resub. And Banish and Jazzium too. Thank you for tuning in to Rad's Guide to Project Zomboid, which originally streamed live on Twitch April 4th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you in next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow survivors.